So now that we've talked about ethylene, now we've got to talk about 1,3-butadiene. This is kind of where we always introduce you into conjugated pi systems. So we've got one sigma bond in between two sets of pi bonds. You should also realize that we've got one, two, three, four p orbitals involved. And so with four p orbitals involved, when you combine four orbitals, it turns out there's four different ways you can combine them. And so with four different p orbitals combining, we're going to create four brand new molecular orbitals. And that's psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, and psi 4. And just like we said before, your lower half are bonding. Your upper half are antibonding, signified by that asterisk. So in this case, you should also realize that we have a pi bond there and a pi bond there. That's two sets of pi electrons, two pairs. So we will put two electrons here and two electrons here. And so the highest energy orbital where you have electrons, that's psi 2, that's your homo. And your lowest energy empty position right there, that is your lumo. So psi 2 here is the homo, psi 3 is the lumo. Couple other things to look at. So if you recall, we said you always start off with a symmetric molecular orbital. So psi 1 here, if you draw a line right down the middle, the left side is the perfect mirror image of the right side. But psi 2 is going to be anti-symmetric. The left side is the exact opposite of the mirror image of the right side. Then back to psi 3, and you're back to being symmetric. If you drew a line right down the middle, the left side is the exact mirror image of the right side. And then finally, psi 4 here is going to be anti-symmetric yet again. Uh, again, the left side the exact opposite of the mirror image of the right-hand side. So they always alternate like that. And we also said that if you count the number of vertical nodes, you always start with zero. In psi 1, there are no nodes. It is only constructive overlap all the way across. Now in psi 2, the only place there's not constructive overlap is right here. And so you get one node. And we'll talk a little bit how those nodes have to be symmetrically distributed in your molecule. And if you only have one, therefore, to be, have symmetry, it's got to be right down the middle. So we'll find out that psi 3's got two nodes. And we've got one right here. So destructive overlap between those two, and then also one right here. So if you notice here, we've got two nodes and then only one antinode. So you have more antibonding interactions than you do bonding, and that's why overall it ends up being an antibonding molecular orbital. So and then finally, in psi 4, you've got three nodes. You've got one here, one here, and one here between every single composite p orbital that made up that molecular orbital. So that's kind of the gist. Just wanted to verify the things we kind of said. These are really important principles to take home. So again, alternating symmetric, anti-symmetric, as well as starting with zero vertical nodes and increasing by one every time you go up in energy. So all these are important. So here I've kind of already drawn the molecular orbitals for you, but you also got to know how to do this on your own. So first thing I want to do is say that because we started out with four p orbitals again, so that's why we created four molecular orbitals, and each of those molecular orbitals are going to kind of be the composite of four adjacent p orbitals. Your lowest energy one and your highest energy one are always the easiest to draw. Your lowest energy one, they will always match all the way across. So here we're going to recreate exactly what we have here on the left, just from first principles here so and then green all across the bottom and if you want to make it green on top and blue on bottom it is arbitrary or if you want to use some other shading convention some people do shaded and non-shaded whatever as long as they match all the way across we're good so and then like I said your highest energy molecular orbital in this case pi 4 star is also equally easy to draw because they always just alternate all the way across so up down up down and the opposite with the green so down up down, up. So your lowest energy orbital and your highest energy orbital, again, are always the easiest ones to draw. Now, the next are going to be a little bit more challenging. Now, when you've only got one vertical node like we do in pi 2, that's easy. Again, the nodes have to be symmetrically distributed. And so to have one vertical node, it has to be right down the middle. It's just kind of like your nose on your face. If your nose were anywhere other than the middle of your face, there would be no symmetry on your face. Uh, so to keep the symmetry, this node has to be right down the middle. And what you need to remember then is that Anywhere you're not crossing a node, your wave functions match. So, but once you cross a node, that's where they're not going to match. And once again, here they will match. And we'll just shade the opposite with the green. And again, whether you want to start with blue on top or green on top, and the other one on the bottom is really arbitrary. I'm just matching it up the way I showed it here in the illustration. All right, so now we'll move on to psi 3 star. And psi 3 star here is going to have two nodes. And when you've got two nodes, so what you want to do is cut each half in half. So if we kind of just look at the left-hand side here, so from right here to right here, right at that middle point, that's where you want to put a node. 
and we'll do the same thing cutting the other side in half and put the node there. So if you notice, it's not exactly halfway in between these two p-looking orbital things that are composite of this molecular orbital, uh, but you'll still cross a node and get the same kind of result here. So again, I'll start with blue on top, just like I did here, but it's arbitrary. So, but I'm crossing a node, so now the blue's gotta be on bottom, so they're out of phase, but I'm not crossing a node, so they'll match there. But again, I'm crossing a node, so they'll be out of phase yet again. And again, the same thing with green being on all the opposite. So that's kind of the approach in drawing the molecular orbitals here, the pi molecular orbitals for 1,3-butadiene. This is something you do need to create. Oftentimes a question on this exam says, you know, draw the LUMO for 1,3-butadiene. And all they're expecting you to do is draw this picture right here. And you should be like, oh, okay, the LUMO for 1,3-butadiene, okay, with four pi electrons, uh, means we're going to put electrons in pi 1 and pi 2. That makes pi 2 the HOMO, pi 3 the LUMO. And if I'm drawing pi 3, uh, that's going to be symmetric and have two vertical nodes. And then you can create the diagram based off that. So that's kind of the general approach here. You do have to know, you know how to draw them all, but most likely on a test, you're probably got to, you know, draw one specific molecular orbital for a given conjugated system.